The MacBook Air M3 may be the best all-around laptop for photographers out there, especially if you do not want to break the bank, right? I highly recommend it, but if you're gonna spec this bad boy out, should you go for the Pro? Let's talk about that right now. Before we get into things, I'm not paid or sponsored. These are my thoughts and my thoughts only, okay? Now, in front of me, I have a 13-inch MacBook Air M3 fully decked out. Two terabytes of storage, 24 gigabytes of unified memory, and I've got the top-of-the-line processor, 8-core CPU, 10-core GPU, 16-core neural engine inside of this. I got the top-of-the-line. It's coming around 2,299 US dollars thereabouts, okay? There's a 15-inch version of this, which will be a little bit more expensive, but just slightly because it's 15 versus 13. But this is getting really into pro specs. But I would say if you're going to get a MacBook Air, do not go for the base one because as soon as you start using third-party software like Chrome, like Adobe's platform, like Photoshop or Lightroom, et cetera, et cetera, the minimal unified memory that they give you in the base model isn't really gonna be enough, to be honest with you. That's just for web browsing and just for some day-to-day -day tasks. But if you're going to really push this machine, definitely spec up the unified memory. That's my advice to you guys. Even if you don't get up to... Um, 24 gigabytes of unified memory, only 16 gigabytes of unified memory. That is much better than going for the 8 gigabyte, which comes in the base model, which I don't understand because, yeah, unless you're using Apple software, you're going to need it. You're going to need more memory. Simple as that. In terms of the color, you see I've got the new color on this as well. This is that sort of that fingerprint resistant, as they call it, color. This is kind of a metallic blue. I actually like it. I'll put the name of it right here just because I don't remember it offhand. But... Does it get fingerprints? And the answer is yes, it does. It's just not as much as before. It's very reminiscent of the M3 Max MacBook Pro, the space gray version. It's very reminiscent of that, but this one is in very beautiful blue. It's a very beautiful laptop, very easy to take around with you. I'm not gonna go much into the design because it's the same as last year and the year before. It's pretty much been the same design for the last few years, but this new color is actually really nice. Okay, outside of that though, we've got the 13 inch display. It is not an XDR, Retina XDR display like you're getting on the Pro. It is gonna be a, a Retina display with True Tone. So it's gonna be a little bit less, but you know, day-to-day -day usage, unless you're putting it next to a Pro laptop, you're not gonna notice the difference. It is 60 Hertz versus, you know, the ProMotion displays on the Pros. But again, if you don't have it next to each other, you're not going to know. It could always hook up displays to this. By the way, two displays to this versus the previous version, the M2 and the M1 respectively. You couldn't do that, now you can with the M3. So with that, let's talk about performance because that's what you're here for, right? Is this the machine for you? Photographers out there, I'm talking to you right now because we're right here in the same boat. I've got an M3 Max MacBook Pro. I've got the M2 Max Mac Studio with me here. I primarily do a lot of my work on. This is going to handle all your photography tasks, no issues at all. I'm running a Lightroom, Photoshop. I'm using Topaz Denoise. I'm using Retouch for me. I'm using, you know, a lot of different software, AI software, all that stuff. This works flawlessly. No issues at all. Again, it could be due to the 24 gigabytes of unified memory that helps out a lot. It does. Guys, invest in good memory. It'll help you out. But I had no issues, no hiccups. It is as fast as my N3 Max MacBook Pro and my M2 Max Mac Studio in terms of the day-to-day -day tasks. Now, and I'm using 100 megapixel medium format here. I'm going to show you an image I'm, I'm editing of this line real quick here. And you're going to see it just goes beautifully with this. No issues at all. I'm going to drop this into Photoshop real quick here. You can see I'm going to use Topaz Denoise. I'm sorry, I'm going to use Topaz Sharpening, not Denoise, because I was shooting out in bright daylight, so I don't really need to worry about noise on this. But uh, Topaz Sharpening, and as you can see, this is rendering up quite fast. I mean, Topaz is not the fastest software out there, but it does a decent job. It might be a hair too slower than my Pro machines, but I'm okay. Like, I can live with this. This is much, much better than what I was seeing on the M1 macbook air is it much different than the m2 it's slightly different i mean you're going to get better improvements on this plus there's other things involved in this and we'll talk about that m2 versus m3 later on in this video but as you see right here it looks absolutely beautiful 100 megapixel uncompressed medium format images 16-bit color it's handling it awesome now i'll show you for portraiture like a sl3 60 megapixel dng files here and I've got this beautiful model that we shot in Betzler when I was there. I'm gonna use Retouch for me. These are great plugins, by the way, AI plugins. Um, and I use them a lot for my portrait work or if I'm shooting people, if I just wanna clean up their skin and I don't wanna spend 15, 20 minutes in Photoshop or Lightroom doing it, this will do it a lot easier. And as you can see right here, I'm running it through various different models, healing, dodge and burn and portrait volume. And look at this, 
from before and after, absolutely br brilliant and it works fantastic. So with that, let's talk about editing video. I've got DaVinci Resolve on this. I've got the, uh, you know, I got the pro version on this and I'm gonna just show you what it looks like with 4K video. Now, this is something from a previous video that I did, about a 20 minute timeline thereabouts. And as you're gonna see right real quick here, it scrubs through no issues at all with that. I'm gonna use uh, face refinement here to give a little bit of an AI aspect to it, track the face, and it works great, okay? It's gonna be slower than the Pro machines respectively, but still handles this and there's no proxy on this whatsoever. And this is running very, very fluid. When I go into rendering here real quick here, let's do that rendering. So we're looking at a 15 minute timeline here and we're looking at about 12 minutes to render this in 4K H.264. So that's not bad guys, that is not bad. Will the M2 Max Max Studio go faster? Of course it will. It can do an 18 minute timeline in five minutes and 46 seconds, the same exact thing, right? Edits were a little bit different, but this has cooling systems inside of it. This is designed for this kind of processing. The thing with the MacBook Air that you need to know if you don't already know this is that there's no fans inside of this thing. So there will be some throttling that comes into play, but I can still render a 4K. You know, I shot this on the Nikon Z8, by the way, 10-bit uh, H.265, 4K 25P, and it renders it great, H.264. So there is some compression coming into play and it's fantastic. 12 minutes for, for 15 minute video. I mean, guys, can we really complain? No. The MacBook Air M3 is, for most people, the perfect laptop. In terms of power, processing, and day-to-day -day usage, this is a very, very good laptop. As a matter of fact, I'm walking out of this review a little bit more surprised than I thought it was gonna be because I already know my Pro machines are gonna be better, but I didn't expect it, this to be that good. And that's why I'm recommending it to you guys out there. If you're primarily into photography, you're just gonna do some 4K video. You're gonna shoot on, let's say, a Sony camera, Nikon Z8, Z9, respectively. You're not gonna do like 8K and RAW. You're not shooting in RED or RE or anything else like that. You're just doing day-to-day -day vlogs and videos for YouTube. This is good enough for most of you out there. But if you're gonna do video, again, bump up the unified memory, which, now brings me to this. Now we look at the price points on this. This is where it gets very, very interesting. Now on my spec out machine, as I mentioned, is 2,299 US dollars, not including tax, right? Say, let's say 2,300, let's round it up. Now, if I look into the 14 inch MacBook Pro M3 chip, eight core CPU, 10 core uh, GPU, 16 core neural engine, which is the same as this MacBook Air, 24 gigabytes of memory, uh, two terabytes of storage, and it got a 14 inch liquid retina xdr display 70 watt usb usb c power adapter blah blah two thunderbolt four uh, usb four ports blah 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 sd card slot you can know the drill right that comes in at two thousand five hundred and ninety nine dollars roughly two thousand six hundred dollars three hundred dollars difference from these two machines if we're talking that and you have the extra three hundred dollars i would go for the pro because now you've got a cooling system inside your laptop which means throttling won't be as bad as it would be on an air. Number two, you get the better display. Also, you've got a SD card slot on side of this. You've got more ports on the side, which is always good. We want to have more ports here on the MacBook Air. We've got one, two, and a headphone jack. That's it. So if you're going to spec up the MacBook Air, and if you have an extra 300 bucks, I would go for the Pro in the M3. Now, what about the MacBook Pro? M3 Pro chipset, right? That comes in at $2,999. Now, again, that is going to be, you know, roughly about $700 difference, but you also get a lot more in terms of power and performance. Up to 36 gigabytes of unified memory, two terabytes of storage. I'm kind of specking out. You can go even go bigger if you want. You've got the Apple M3 Pro chip with 11 core CPU, 14 core GPU, 16 core neural engine. I mean, you got the Retina XDR display, you got the whole shebang of this bad boy, and that is 700 bucks more. So with that said, Apple's really sort of um, priced this in a very interesting way. And it's not to say that it's bad or good, it's to say that how close these are to each other. But again, for a few hundred dollars more for cooling, you're not gonna worry about throttling, you got more ports, you got a better display, yeah, it may be a one inch bigger and it may be not as thin. I would go for the Pro. Now, let's back up a second here. What about between the M2 MacBook Air and the M3 MacBook Air? 
Because everybody I'm watching on YouTube saying, go for the M2 MacBook Air because the performance isn't that much different and you're gonna save a little bit of money. I am gonna disagree with them and I'll tell you why. Let me ask you a question. If you were to buy a secondhand laptop on the market, would you wanna buy the more newer chipset or the older chipset? What's gonna have better resale value? This is gonna have better resale value. How much more? Could be three, could be $500 more. You don't know. We don't, we're not in that, that era of selling these out a few years later. But again, the M3 is not just about, you know, just a minor upgrade. There's other things involved. If you want to go into Cinebench and Blender, there's going to be things that this, this processor can do. The M2 probably doesn't do as well as you compare apples to apples, okay? I would say the M3 is where I would go regardless. A couple hundred dollars, $50, $200, whatever it may be. I would go for this because your longevity is going to be more so. Number one, Apple's probably going to support this longer than the M2. Sooner or later, they're going to just start discontinuing laptops. M1, gone. Now we've got the M2. That may go in a couple of years, but the M3 will still be around. So you have more support. So if you want to sell it, you've got a laptop that has some support there. Also, being able to use two displays is a very good thing. Sometimes we want to use two displays. Now here I use one display, but I've got this set up. I was able to borrow another display to actually show you what it looks like. And it's great. I like this. The fact that I can use two displays with a MacBook Air is awesome. As I mentioned, for most people, this is going to be the best laptop all around. The sweet spot for this laptop, in my personal opinion, is 16 gigabytes unified memory, 24. If you can afford it, go for it. But 16 is the sweet spot. Unfortunately, the Apple store is here in Singapore. They You have to order 16 gigabytes, if I'm not mistaken, of unified memory. They, it's not available in store, which I don't know why, but it should be. Um, I would say at least minimum one terabyte of storage, and especially if you're gonna be doing video photos, you're gonna want that space because nowadays our, we have more megapixels on our camera systems. Our video files are at least 4K for most people out there. That's gonna take up storage. Of course, you can use an external drive, but I would at least say one terabyte. Now, because of the lack of ports on the side, I wish Apple would give us more ports. Apple, give us more ports, please. But they don't. Definitely get a USB hub or some sort of docking uh, system that you can plug into this that gives you more access to ports. I think that would be great. But overall, I think if you spec this out appropriately, this is the best machine on the market, hands down in terms of UI, in terms of size, build quality, design, performance. Yes, there's some PCs out there that may come close or may even best it in some ways, but are you sacrificing size, weight, portability, and battery life? The battery life out of these M series chips are phenomenal. Plug it in, don't plug it in, you're still getting the same performance. Can't say that for PCs right now, not yet. Maybe in the future, but you can't say that right now for them. So with that, guys, those are my thoughts here on the MacBook Air M3. I'm impressed. I like this machine. I think it's a fantastic machine for many people out there, especially in the photography. This is all you need in terms of performance. But again, if you're going to spec this bad boy out, $300 more, I would go from the M3 MacBook Pro because better display, SD card, more ports. You've got a cooling system inside the laptop. It's going to last you, especially if you want to push your laptop down the road in content creation and photography, even more so batch editing, et cetera, et cetera. Make, uh, higher megapixels, that will help you out in the long run. Okay, guys, that's it. Those are my thoughts on the laptop. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. More content on the way. Thanks again for the support, and I'll chat to you soon.